Hello, I'm Glenn Hall, and this is part 10 of The Mystery of the Beast. Today's video is called The Seventh Head of the Beast. If you've been watching these videos, you understand now that the beast is man, and that the heads of the beasts that are represented in Scripture deal with the governments that God has established over men. Today we're going to look specifically at the seventh head of the beast. The seventh head of the beast as described in Revelation chapter 13. For any of you who are interested in prophecy and the fulfillment of prophecy, I think you're going to find today's video extremely interesting. Let's start with scripture from Daniel chapter 7. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel saw a dream and visions of his head as he lay in his bed. Then he wrote down the dream and told the sum of the matter. Daniel declared, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea, and four great beasts came up out of the sea, different from one another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings, then as I looked, its wings were plucked off, and it was lifted up from the ground and made to stand on two feet like a man. And the mind of a man was given to it. And behold, another beast, a second one, like a bear. It was raised up on one side. It had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth, and it was told, Arise, devour much flesh. After this I looked, and behold, another, like a leopard, with four wings of a bird on its back. And the beast had four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, terrifying and dreadful, and exceedingly strong. It had great iron teeth. It devoured in broken pieces and stomped what was left with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up another among them, another horn, a little one, before which three of the first horns were plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things. Daniel here describes four beasts arising from the sea. Now, if you remember from Revelation chapter 13, we see a beast rising from the sea with seven heads and ten horns. And that beast looks exactly like the dragon, who is Satan, who is depicted in Revelation chapter 12, verse 3. These four beasts, many people believe, are the same four beasts that you see in the revelation that God gave Daniel in Daniel chapter 2. And that's what we discussed in the last couple of videos was this particular vision that Daniel saw. It was a dream that Nebuchadnezzar had had, and then God revealed both the dream and the interpretation to Daniel. And here's how it begins. In verse 31 of chapter 2, Daniel says, You saw, O king, and behold a great image. This image, mighty and of exceeding brightness, stood before you, and its appearance was frightening. The head of this image was of fine gold, its chest and arms of silver, its middle and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. As you looked, a stone was cut out by no human hand, and it struck the image on its feet of iron and clay and broke them in pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold all together were broken in pieces and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away so that not a trace of them could be found. But the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Well, this great mountain is another kingdom. Mountains are kingdoms in scripture. And this stone that becomes a great kingdom that destroys all of the kingdoms before it is the kingdom of God. We are now on the threshold of this 
happening. Now, I explained last time that the kingdom, the first kingdom, the head of gold, which was, Daniel said, was Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. I explained that that was the third biblical kingdom that's expressed in terms of the beast. After that, the kingdom of Medea, Persia. After that, the kingdom of Greece. And after that, the kingdom of Rome. I only went down to four, which would have been third, fourth, fifth, and sixth kingdoms. Now, I did not tell you then that in verse 33, where it says its legs were of iron, the iron kingdom is the Roman kingdom. Then it says its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. That is the fifth kingdom. So there are five kingdoms that are described here in Daniel chapter 2. Okay, now when we go back to Daniel chapter 7, this is in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon. This was the king that was overthrown by Persia. So the kingdom of Babylon is about at the end now. So Daniel is receiving this vision at the end of the Babylonian kingdom. So he's not going to be seeing Babylon rising. It would make no sense for God to reveal that. Instead, God's going to begin revealing the kingdom's beginning with the next kingdom. The next kingdom is Persia. So the first kingdom we see, the first beast, was like a lion and had eagle's wings. That was the first beast he saw. A second beast was like a bear. Third beast was like a leopard. Okay, so that would be the fourth, fifth, and sixth heads of the beast. And then after that, behold another beast. A fourth beast, terrifying and dreadful and exceedingly strong. It had great iron teeth. It devoured and broke in broken pieces and stomped what was left with its feet. So... This beast, the fourth one revealed in Daniel 7, is the seventh head of the beast. It's very interesting now. I want you to go to Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13, 1 says this, And I saw a beast rising out of the sea with ten horns and seven heads with ten diadems on its horns and blasphemous names on its heads. And then verse 2 says this, And the beast that I saw was like a leopard. Well, if you go back to Daniel chapter 7, that was the third of the beasts that Daniel saw. And then in Revelation it goes on, Its feet were like a bear's. Okay, that was the second beast that Daniel saw. And then Revelation says its mouth was like a lion's mouth. Well, that was the first beast that Daniel saw arising from the sea. So you see here in the description, John is seeing this vision of a great beast. It has the characteristics of the previous three kingdoms, including the kingdom that is now reigning. And he goes on, and to it, the dragon, to the beast, the dragon gave his power and his throne and great authority. One of its heads seemed to have a mortal wound, but its mortal wound was healed, and the whole earth marveled as they followed the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, for he had given his authority to the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast, and who can fight against it? Now this beast is the seventh beast. This is the beast that Christians have feared forever because in the book of Revelation, you see that this beast is given power over the holy people. Everyone expects 
this beast to be revealed at the end time and then to rule for three and a half years. The next verse says, verse 5, 13, Revelation 13, 5 says this, And the beast was given a mouth uttering haughty and blasphemous words, and it was allowed to exercise authority for 42 months. It opened its mouth to utter blasphemies against God, blaspheming his name and his dwelling, that is, those who dwell in heaven. And it was allowed to make war on the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given it over every tribe and people and language and nation. And all who dwell on earth will worship it. Everyone whose name has not been written before the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb who was slain. This is the beast. The seventh head is the beast that everyone has feared. Everyone is always thinking, now is the time it's going to be revealed. We're about to enter the three and a half year tribulation. 42 months in verse 5 is three and a half years. It's also 1260 days. It's also a time, times, and half a time. But what does that time period really mean? I don't know that anyone has really figured it out. I have an idea and I'm going to share that idea with you as we progress here. Now we're going to go back to Daniel chapter 7. Now remember everything I said out of Revelation chapter 13, 5. 13, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Remember the beast was given a mouth uttering haughty and blasphemous words. Let's go back to Daniel 7. We're going, to go, we're going to skip a little ways here because the middle part deals with another idea that I will soon be discussing. But going to verse 15 now in Daniel 7. As for me, Daniel, my spirit within me was anxious and the visions of my head alarmed me. I approached one of those who stood there and asked him the truth concerning all this. So he told me and made known to me the interpretation of the things. Verse 17, these four great beasts are four kings who shall arise out of the earth. Okay, that shows you right there that Babylon is not included. The king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, is not included here. This is beginning with Cyrus the Great, who was the ruler of Persia when Babylon was destroyed. And so, begins with that beast. That is the beast, the first beast described here, like this. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. Then as I looked, its wings were plucked off and it was lifted up from the ground and made to stand on two feet like a man. And the mind of a man was given to it. Just this morning, the Lord gave me some revelation concerning that verse, but we won't get into that today. So back here at um, Daniel 7, chapter, or verse 17, These four great beasts are four kings who shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, forever and ever. Then I desired to know the truth about the fourth beast, which was different from all the rest, exceedingly terrifying with its feet of iron and claws of bronze, and which devoured and broke in broken pieces and stomped what was left with its feet, and about the ten horns that were on its head and the other horn that came up and before which three of them fell, the horn that had great eyes, that had eyes and a mouth that spoke great things and that seemed greater than its companions. As I looked, this horn made war with the saints and overcame them. Until the Ancient of Days came, and judgment was given for the saints of the Most High, and the time came when the saints possessed the kingdom. Thus he said, this is an angel who is talking to Daniel, As for the fourth beast, there shall be a fourth kingdom on earth, which shall be different from all the kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth and trample it down and break it to pieces.
As for the ten horns out of his kingdom, ten kings shall arise, and another shall arise after them. He shall be different from the former ones. He shall put down three kings. He shall speak words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. I don't like the word saints. I like to say the Kodeshim or the holy ones of the Most High. Kodesh is the word for holy. He shall speak words against the Most High and he shall wear out the holy ones of the Most High and shall think to change the times and the law. And they shall be given into his hand for a time, times, and half a time. Here is the 42 months that we saw in Revelation chapter 13. But the court shall sit in judgment and his dominion shall be taken away to be consumed and destroyed to the end. And the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the holy ones of the Most High. His kingdom shall be an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him. So the fourth beast, the fourth beast is the one that Daniel really wants to know about because there's something different about this fourth beast. What is the fourth beast or the fourth head of the beast? Remember, the heads are the governments. The beast itself consists of all men. We are always under someone, some government. So Daniel saw these kingdoms arise. He saw Persia, then Greece, then Rome. And it was at the time of Rome that John wrote the book of Revelation. And I want to take you to a verse to explain something about that soon in this video today. So Rome is the third beast that Daniel sees, but then there's a fourth beast that he sees that comes up after Rome. Well, what happened after Rome? Rome really ceased to be an empire around 470 AD. It was shortly after that that we had what has been become known as the Holy Roman Empire. The Holy Roman Empire consisted of all of the nation states of Europe on to England and then finally to America. Have you noticed, for example, that, the, that Washington, D.C. is patterned after Rome? Our buildings look like old Roman architecture. And that's why in the first, the first parable of the beast in Daniel chapter 2, where you have the image of the beast that Nebuchadnezzar saw in his dream, you have the legs of iron, which represents the Roman Empire. But then it describes the toes, which are iron and clay. And just as iron and clay don't mix well together, it says that this kingdom is not going to sometimes mix so well together. And in Daniel chapter 7, you have a little horn. A little horn who is represented to be one of the kings of this kingdom. Well, as we know, the nation states of Europe always had their king. You had some empires arise, Habsburg, Austrian, German, France, English, Spanish. What do you think, or who do you think the little horn might represent? What does the little horn do? The little horn
utters blasphemies against God. And not only that, it destroys the Kodeshim. Well, look at Revelation chapter 13, verse 5. The beast was given a mouth uttering haughty and blasphemous words, and it was allowed to exercise authority for 42 months, or a time, times, and half a time, as we see here in Daniel 7. It opened its mouth to utter blasphemies against God, blaspheming his name and his dwelling, that is, those who dwell in heaven, and it was allowed to make war on the holy ones and to overcome them. Well, if you know anything about the history of the Catholic Church, The Catholic Church is an idolatrous church that has uttered blasphemies against God and the holy people for its entire existence. The Pope calls himself the Vicar of Christ. The Pope dares to make pronouncements that they record in the magisterium that will even outweigh what the scripture says. What the Pope says is law. What the Pope said, beginning around 500 AD, and then for many centuries after that, the Pope declared law. And if someone, and if the Pope or the ruling authorities did not like what someone was doing, someone who was trying to obey the Word of God, if he could even get the word of God because the word of God was outlawed in all the domains of the Catholic Church until fairly recently. If someone was trying to live a righteous life before God, but it was contrary to the dictates of the Catholic Church, that person would be either excommunicated or tortured or killed. And so the holy people of God were persecuted under this beast kingdom, this head, for over a thousand years, beginning around 500 AD. And the thing is, the reign of this beast, this particular beast, even today has not yet ended. This beast is still active. It's still controlling many levers of power in government. Okay, so we need to understand that this is the seventh beast. And interestingly, though, there is an eighth beast that the book of Revelation talks about. Let's go now to Revelation chapter 17. I'm not going to begin at the beginning of 17 because there's so many things to explain and I'm leaving that for another video. Here, in verse 8 of 17, the angel is discussing with John the beast that he saw. The beast that you saw was and is not and is about to rise from the bottomless pit or from the abyss about to rise from the abyss and go to destruction. And the dwellers on earth whose names have not been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world will marvel to see the beast because it was and is not and is to come. This calls for a mind with wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman is seated. The woman is known as Babylon the Great. And we are going to be dealing very much with Babylon the Great very soon. For your information, Babylon the Great is the biblical word for what everyone today is calling the deep state.
This calls for a mind with wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman is seated. Remember, mountains are governments. So this deep state, this Babylon the Great, has been seated upon the seven governments, the seven heads of the beast. Then he goes on revealing this to John. They are also seven kings. Now, this is the clincher. This is so cool. Five of whom have fallen. One is, and the other has not yet come. And when he does come, he must remain only a little while. Only a little while. You mean like 14 or 42 months? 1260 days? A time times and half a time? Only a little while. Okay, but did you notice this? Five of the kings had fallen by the time John saw this revelation. But one is, and the other has not yet come. If five have fallen, and one is, that's the sixth, the one that hasn't yet come is the seventh. Rome was the sixth empire, the seventh, is the Holy Roman Empire. And it was characterized by blasphemy against God. And it was characterized by persecution of the holy people. That's the seventh beast. The mystery of the beast is really who is the eighth beast or the eighth head of the beast. What is that? We're coming there. We're going to get there. And this entire understanding of scripture that has come to me has come because of who I believe or what I believe the head of the, fifth, of the eighth beast is. But before we get there, we have to understand the beast, who the beast is, what the governments of the beast have been, what it has looked like, and next, some other aspects with respect to Revelation chapter 13 and with respect to what Babylon the Great is really is. Stay tuned because this gets very interesting.